Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Tom Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you've got a comment, go ahead and email it to me. Uh, box13 at greatdetectives.net uh, Be sure to cast your vote for the show on Podcast Alley, podcastalley.greatdetectives.net And follow us over on Twitter at Radio Detectives. Well, before we do get started today, I want to let you know about Netflix. You know, the Netflix library continues to add new titles. Just uh, yesterday, while searching through Netflix, I saw that the first series of Sherlock, the 21st century BBC take on Sherlock Holmes, is available in the Instant Watch queue, joining thousands of other titles, and there are even more after a recent deal with uh, Miramax. Whatever your taste or interest, Netflix is great because you're able to choose what you want to watch. They have a great selection of nearly 100,000 DVD titles and an ever-increasing number of Instant Watch. You can try Netflix out for free. Go to netflix.greatdetectives.net, or if you are in Canada, go to netflixca.greatdetectives.net. Well, let's get into today's episode of Sherlock Holmes, The Adventure of the Scarlet Worm. Cremel Hair Tonic and Cremel Shampoo present the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Starring Nigel Bruce as Dr. Watson and Tom Conway as Sherlock Holmes. Well, once again, it's Monday evening and time for our weekly visit with the good Dr. Watson. Good evening, Dr. Watson. Good evening, Mr. Bell. From the hints you gave us last week about tonight's story, it sounded like quite a yarn. It took place in Paris, you said. Yes, my boy. It was in that colorful city of bright lights lilting music and beautiful women that Sherlock Holmes and I had one of the oddest adventures that ever happened to us in our long association. I call the case The Adventure of the Scarlet Worm. Sounds mighty intriguing, Dr. Watson. But first, men, if you want a successful, prosperous appearance, don't give your hair that cheap, greasy, plastered-down look. I've heard many men complain lately that the hairdressing they use is too greasy or too highly perfumed. That's why I urge you to try Cremel Hair Tonic. This highly specialized hair tonic has just enough light oil to keep hair handsomely groomed all day long. Every hair in place. Cremel gives hair a rich, healthy-looking luster, too. Yet it never leaves hair looking or feeling greasy or sticky. This is because Cremel contains a special combination of hair grooming ingredients which is found in no other hair tonic. After you apply Cremel, just run your hand over your hair. Notice how delightfully clean your hair feels. Notice how no greasy film comes off on your hand or hat band. And how the ladies admire that natural, well-groomed look which Kreml always gives. Yes, Kreml gives your hair a handsome, clean-cut appearance. As if you had just combed it, and it keeps it that way all day long. K-R-E-M-L, Kreml Hair Tonic. Now, Dr. Watson... How about your new Sherlock Holmes story, The Adventure of the Scarlet Worm? Well, Mr. Bell, though that singular affair took place in Paris, I suppose the story really began on an October evening in, in Baker Street, a long, long time ago. I'd been more than usually busy with my practice that day, and I returned to our lodging shortly after nine, I remember. As I entered the living room, Sherlock Holmes was seated at his side table, clad in his dressing gown and working hard over a chemical investigation. A large curved retort was boiling furiously in the bluish flame of a Bunsen burner. Finally, he brought a test tube containing a solution over to the table. In his right hand, he held a slip of litmus paper. You come at a crisis, Watson. If this litmus paper remains blue, all is well. If it turns red, it means a man's life. Good Lord, Holmes, really? Aha. As I thought, it turns red. And now to send a telegram to Scotland Yard, and I need have no further connection with the case. Well, you didn't tell me that you were working on a new case, Holmes? It was a shoddy little affair, my dear Watson. An orthopedic shoemaker in Wapping became somewhat fretful with his wife. He added poison to her morning pot of tea and was stupid enough to leave a sample of the deadly brew. It was purely a routine matter. Let's forget it. You look tired, old chap. Yes, I'm home. Busy day. I hope you won't be too tired to accompany me to Paris tomorrow. To Paris? Why? This afternoon, I received a very rare visitor in these rooms, my brother Mycroft. All is not well at the foreign office. They need our help. 
Oh, what's wrong, Holmes? An international spy ring is at work. In the past few months, important secrets have leaked out. Vital secrets that might bring this country to the verge of war. Good gracious me. Two of the foreign officers' brightest young men have committed suicide rather than divulge how they betrayed their trust. Mycroft tells me he has reason to suspect a beautiful and dangerous young lady in Paris who inspired these men, uh, in these men, a loyalty even above patriotism. And they want you to try and trap her, is that it? No, Watson. They want us. Oh, oh us. Yes. Mycroft and I agreed that you would be perfect bait to use in such a trap. Bait? Makes me sound like a piece of cheese. Only metaphorically, Watson. You must agree that your imposing appearance, your open countenance and hearty manner would attract the attention of any female spy. Yes, I see what you mean. Perhaps you're right. In any case, we shall make you doubly desirable by entrusting you with uh, uh, certain invaluable naval secrets. Masterly, Holmes. Masterly. You will entrust me with utterly worthless documents, spread the story that they're valuable, and uh, wait for the woman to approach me. Precisely. I shall accompany you as a bodyguard, but uh, leave you largely to your own devices. Yes, Watson, I have high hopes of this trip to Paris. With you as the worm and me as the hook, I think we may snare this evil loveliness. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, you have shown me your credentials and explained your mission. We are aware of this firing. We are on constant watch. But I think you would have done better to have stayed in your own country. We of the Paris police are perfectly capable of handling such an affair ourselves, I assure you. Inspector Rigaud, the fact remains that two foreign office men died here under sinister circumstances. Yeah, nasty business, you know. British officials. Monsieur, I myself investigated the deaths. They were both self-inflicted. We of the Dersian Bureau cannot fathom the mind of a suicide. Quite. But I doubt if the deaths were coincidental. Surely there must be some connecting link between them, Inspector? The only facts I can give you, monsieur, are these. Both men frequented an American-owned gambling casino in Montmartre. The name of it, please? Slater's en Room Fontaine. The only other fact I can give you is that both the dead men were seen there in the company of a certain Mademoiselle Elvira. Ah, that must be the woman that Mycroft spoke of. Can you describe her, Inspector? Oh, what a woman. Although she is very young. Princes have dueled for her papers. Oh, really? At the moment, a high official of the Bank de France lies in a prison cell because he appropriated funds that he lavished on her. She is a femme fatale, monsieur. But she is as elusive as the wind. Well, Watson, our first move is obvious. Tonight, we shall visit Slater's gambling casino on the Rue Fontaine and try our luck. <laughs> I say, Holmes, this is all rather exciting, isn't it? Paris at night, and we're on our way to an American gambling casino in the hopes of meeting a beautiful young spy named Elvira. <laughs> Just like a novel. Quite. Incidentally, since the young lady apparently moves in high society, I think it would be wiser if we give you a more impressive name. A uh, fictitious title, perhaps. Well, how about the title I used once before? Sir William Norton. Splendid. Sir William Norton it shall be. And I trust that Sir William remembers the role he is to play. Yes, indeed, Holmes. If I do meet the young lady, I'm to appear very susceptible to her beauty. Uh, not too hard for you, I imagine. And... Uh... And I'm to drop dark hints about the valuable secrets that I'm carrying. Precisely, Watson. And uh, if the lady proves as intrigued as I hope she will, you will follow the matter through to its uh, logical conclusion. Well, logical conclusion, Holmes. Yes, I don't quite know how to take that. Ah, here's the casino. Courage, Watson. And good luck. Good evening. I'm Sam Slater. You gentlemen haven't been here before. No, Mr. Slater. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and uh, this is Sir William Norton. How, How do you do, do, sir? Holmes? Sherlock Holmes, the detective? Not here drumming up business, I hope. Oh, no. Just showing Sir William some of the sights of Paris. Fine. Then relax and enjoy yourself, gentlemen. Forget your profession, Mr. Holmes. In Paris at night, there's no crime. <laughs> or if there is, the police are conveniently blind to it. Glad to have you. Oh, nice place, Holmes. I think perhaps I'll take a little flutter at the tables. Uh, pardon, monsieur. You wish to speak to me, sir? Uh, yes. I could not help but overhear Slater mention your name. It is a great honor to meet Sherlock Holmes. Uh, uh, permit me to introduce myself. I am Andre Flandon. How do you do? And this is Sir William Norton. I flatter myself that uh, perhaps you have heard of me. 
My poetry has been published in England. Oh, poetry, oh, Lord. No, Monsieur Flandon, I'm afraid it's escaped me. You have not heard my verses? Etain, etain salon, où seront je mon cœur? <laughs> Charming, do you not think? Quite. Though the metaphor seems a little involved, if you don't mind my saying so. What do you think, Sir William? Well, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one language. That's English. <laughs> bon. Then I shall recite a poem of mine in English translation. Oh, must you? I say, Holmes, look at that stunning creature sitting by herself at the Chemin de Fur table. <laughs> She's smiling at me. Oh, you are fortunate, Sir William. That is Mademoiselle Elvira. Elvira? Oh, never heard of her. And now, gentlemen, in translation, my poem begins... A grave as the grave, August as August heat. Yes, I think I'll try my luck at the tables over there. I'll see you later, Holmes. Much later, I hope, Sir William. Sir William Norton, is it not? Yes, it is. Oh, I can't think how you recognize me, Miss, uh, uh, Madam... Uh, you may call me Elvira. Oh, well, <laughs> friendly of you. Uh, Elvira? <laughs> how do you know me? Sam Slater told me who you were. He knows that I have a certain penchant for distinguished Englishmen. That's extremely flattering. Perhaps you'd care to join me in a glass of champagne. Oh, yes, I would like that. Let's sit at this table. Yes, you are. Garçon! Garçon! Oui, monsieur. Uh, de champagne. Uh, uh, bon champagne, too. Oui, monsieur. You are here in Paris on business? Uh, uh-huh. Yes, yes, I am. Important business. You see, I'm... Uh, well, I'm handling an extremely delicate and confidential matter for the British government. Oh, how very impressive. And I suppose you will be too busy to let me show you some of the sides of that. Oh, no, I don't think so. All work, no play, you know. I, I'd be very flattered to escort you, but... Uh... Oh, good. <laughs> then if we are to be friends, hmm? I can't go on calling you Sir William. I think I shall call you Willie. Do you mind? Oh, Willie, no, 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 thank you. Willie, uh, good night. Oh, 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 yes, sir, thank you. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Uh, open up, will you? Oui, mercy. Well, we must uh, drink a toast, though, will uh. May I propose one uh, to Willie, the man of mystery? Oh, thank you, my dear, and I shall drink to uh, Elvira and to our better acquaintance. Mm. Good night, Willie. I shall see you tomorrow. Yes, rather. Uh, how about how about breakfast? Oh, it's nearly breakfast time now. Oh, is it really? How about lunch? <laughs> yes, yes, of course, my dear. But your important mission for the British government. Uh, when will you attend to that? Well, in a day or two, Elvira. Uh, good night, my dear. Come here, Willie. Closer. Good night. What? You, you kiss me, you little darling. Thanks awfully. <laughs> You're doing splendidly, Watson. Splendidly. Keep it up. Oh, she's a sweet little thing, Holmes. It's hard to believe that she's a spy. I told her that I was here on a secret and confidential mission. I even told her that I was carrying important naval plans. She didn't seem particularly interested. Of course not. She's much too clever to use the clumsy approach. She'll work slowly. She'll wait until she thinks she's got you completely captivated before she goes after that secret. Oh, then I'm just to carry on the way I did last night. Yes, old chap. Oh, good. Wine her, dine her, send her flowers, buy her jewellery. Make her think you're head over heels in love with her. I suspect that you won't find the job too unpleasant. Oh, I'm sure I shall. days now, Elvira. You've been showing me past, but <laughs> this is the first time I've actually been in your flat. You like it, Willie? Yes, very much. <laughs> I thought it would be much quieter here. At dinner, you said you were going to explain some of your important business to me. You were going to show me what a secret treaty looks like. Yes, I know I said that, but uh, Elvira, a pretty girl like you wouldn't be interested in, in such matters. Oh, but I would. You have the treaty with you? Yes, I have. Then please let me see it. Oh, please, Willie. Oh, I can't go through with this masquerade any longer. Masquerade? What do you mean? Well, I've, I've grown really fond of you in these last few days, Elvira. I can't let you walk into a trap. Trap? What are you talking about, Willie? I'm not Willie. I'm, 
I'm not Sir William Norton. My name's Watson. Dr. John H. Watson. My closest friend is the detective Sherlock Holmes. We came to Paris to try and trap you. Trap me? Oh, my dear girl, you're suspected of being mixed up in a spy ring. What? Well, that's why I pose as a, an important embassy from England. From England. Trap! Are you doddering old fool? Oh, no, don't say that, don't say that. I'll teach you about traps. Elvira, put down that revolver. No, I'm going to. I'm, oh, I'm you're going to drop it, my dear. I can't do it. I'm just a stupid, weak female after all. I've grown fond of you, too. The bumbling old walrus. Oh, there, 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 Elvira. You remind me of my father. He was such a sentimental old fool. Like you. Just as sweet. Elvira, you're young. I know you don't really want to stay mixed up with a bunch of criminals. No, no, no. Now, now, look here. You tell Sherlock Holmes and me what you know about this spy ring, and we'll see that no harm comes to you, my dear. I have wanted to get out of it for months. It was rather glamorous and exciting at first, and they paid me well. But I hate them now. And yet when I told them I wanted to get away, they threatened me. Oh, we'll take care of you. Just tell us who's at the head of the organization. That I don't know. But I can tell you a lot about some of the members. That's splendid. And slip on your coat and a funny little bonnet and, and we'll go over and talk to Sherlock Holmes. Oh, and have him see me looking like this. Oh, very eyes and red. Oh, no. You go and bring him here. By the time you get back, I'll be more presentable. All right, sir. I'll go and get him at once. Watson, I'm occasionally astonished at the many facets to your character. Oh, thank you very much, Holmes. It's nice of you to say so. Your personal charm has apparently convinced a dangerous woman that crime does not pay. It's remarkable, if it's true. What do you mean, if it's true? Surely it must have occurred... Even to a man burning with the zeal of one who was snatched a convert from the fiery flames, that this could be a trap for us to walk into. The delay, while the young lady makes herself presentable, would provide an excellent opportunity for her to summon her associates. Oh, upon my soul, Holmes, you're utterly cynical. I don't believe you have a heart. Possibly not, but I do have a head. Well, here's her place now. Stop, cabby, stop. Arete. Oh, I'll bet you a hundred pounds to a shilling that she's still waiting for us and alone. Long odds, Watson. Very long odds. Look, look, look. The concierge is sweeping up the steps. He'll be able to tell us if anyone's been here since I left. True. Uh, bonsoir. Bonsoir, monsieur. Vous parlez anglais? Yes, monsieur. Splendid fellow. Parlez anglais. Uh, look here. We were, we were calling on Mademoiselle Elvira. Has anyone been to see her in the last half an hour? Oui, monsieur. A man. She left with him only five minutes ago. Though I do not think she wished to go. You mean that she was taken away by force? Not exactly, monsieur. But I could swear on the sacre coeur that the man who accompanied her was holding a pistol to her back. You don't mean it. I uh, think she has been, uh, how you say, kidnapped. In just a moment, we'll rejoin Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Every man who takes pride in his appearance should know that handsome, healthy-looking hair needs a hygienic scalp. That's why when you buy a hair tonic, be sure to get your money's worth. Don't settle for just any hairdressing when you can enjoy the extra advantages of Cremel hair tonic. This highly specialized hair tonic contains an amazing combination of hair grooming ingredients, which is found in no other hair tonic. Cremel keeps dry, stubborn hair neatly in place all day and always gives hair such a natural, well-groomed appearance, never sticky or greasy. But men, Kreml does lots more than keep hair looking handsome. Kreml leaves your scalp feeling alive and tingling. At the same time, it removes itchy, loose dandruff. It's simply great to lubricate a dry scalp. And if your hair is so dry it breaks and falls when you comb it, Kreml actually helps condition the hair, in that it makes it feel softer, more pliable. So men... Buy a bottle of Kreml at any drug counter. Ask for an application at your barber shop. Let Kreml help keep your scalp hygienic. Your hair always looking handsome, always looking its very best. K-R-E-M-L. Kreml hair tonic. 
Well, Dr. Watson, once again you left me on the edge of my chair. So when you went back to the girl's flat, she'd been kidnapped, hmm? What did you do next? Well, fortunately, the concierge was able to give us a good description of the cab driver. And with the aid of Inspector Rigo, we were able to find the man and question him. He'd driven the couple, he told us, to a vile apache den in the alleys of Montmartre. Uh, a club known as the Scarlet Worm. Holmes and I, accompanied by the French inspector, lost no time in taking a cab to the place. Messieurs, I should not permit you to visit Le Ver et Carlat, the Scarlet Worm, as you would say, without my protection. It is a cesspool of the evil underworld. Men have been known to enter there and make their exit by back door. It burst into the sewer. Oh, Lord, they've taken that poor little girl there. Uh... Inspector Rigo. As I said, Mademoiselle Elvira told my friend that she does not know who is at the head of this organization. Have you any suspicions? Yes, but little else, my friend. One thing we are sure of, this man of mystery, the brain behind these criminals, is not French. Probably he is English. An Englishman, or so sure not. There. Ah. Le Ver et Carlat is waiting for us. Be on the alert, my friends, and keep close to me. Oh, the Sam Slater, the man who, who owns the casino we went to the other night. Yes, and he seems to be involved in a violent argument. Yeah, a rat hole like this, you don't know what you're doing, sir. But... What are you doing here? Stay in your own golden peace time. Who is the man that Slater's arguing with, Inspector? Well, that is Chabert, the owner of this establishment. Oh, Slater's leaving. I wonder what he was doing in a place like this. Uh, come, we'll speak to Chabert and find out. Et bonsoir, Chabert. Uh, bonsoir. Ah, I am honored with a visit from the inspector, the detector. Que voulez-vous? Since when does a visitor from the Dezium Bureau have to explain his business, Chabert? Tell me, why was Slater here? And why did you argue? Bah, sure. He comes here to try and hire some of my apache. He has trouble collecting his gambling debts. I spit on him and his high class victims. Let the kind stick to themselves. I'm not bothered if I can learn. Let's sit at the table, shall we? You might as well be as unobtrusive as possible. I shall rejoin you in a moment, monsieur. I wish to make some investigation. Watson. You seem to be a positive magnet towards the fair sex. Look at this uh, young lady heading for you. Oh, red hair, belly, and a painted face. Not my type, I'm afraid. Bonsoir, monsieur. Voulez-vous m'offrir un apéritif? Uh, run along, young lady, and don't sit there. Oh, no, no, Watson. Where's your chivalry? Please sit down, won't you? Merci, monsieur. Pretend you don't recognize me. Of course I don't. Me. Never saw you before in my life. Whereas I've been keeping silence, Mademoiselle Elvira. Elvira! The wig is excellent and the use of makeup superb, Mademoiselle. But I recognized you at once by the confirmation of your earlobes. Elvira, why are you disguised? Why'd they bring you here? Shh. I cannot speak now. You must get me away at once. Be careful. I'm being watched. We can't leave by the front way. But I know a back staircase that leads from the cellar. But there may be trouble. You take her, Watson. I'll guard the retreat. When the music starts again, dance with her. When you get to the back of the hall, slip out. I'll join you at the hotel. Look, 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 Holmes. Look who's coming to our table. It's that ghastly poet fellow we met at the casino. André Flandon. Pay no attention. I'll take care of him. Ah, once again, I meet my friend Sherlock Holmes. I have a new poem that I've composed in your especial honor. Dance, Watson, and good luck. All right, you are, Holmes. Come along, my dear. Come along. Your friends leave. Au revoir. Now, I shall tell you my poem. It begins... Well, Vera, my dear, I can't tell you how relieved I am to find you all right. Shh, don't look so serious. Pretend that I'm some girl that you don't know. Laugh. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's better. Now, dance me toward that door in the corner. There we are. <laughs> now, let's slip through it. Don't see a thing. Follow me. There are stone stairs here. Careful. Where do these lead? To an alley. Oh, careful. The stairs turn here. Look out, there's, there's a light coming up the steps towards us. Stop it! You did not think you could live so easily, did you, Elvira? Uh, I've been waiting for you. Look out, he's got an eye! But he can't see without his lantern. Where's that pass? Uh, run, Elvira. I'll follow you. Run, run, run. You will follow her. Oh, won't I? 
How'd you like that, you filthy swine? Watson, are you all right? Yes, Holmes, I'm quite all right. Then run, old chap. I'll take care of this end. See that the girl is safe. Well, now that we're all safely back at the hotel, I can tell you, Holmes, that I hated leaving you in that filthy den. Inspector Rigaud had a revolver. It's more efficient than a knife, eh, Inspector? It was a near thing, Monsieur Holmes. You fought bravely, and so did your recumbent friend on the sofa there. André Flandon, the poet. I wondered why you brought him back here. For a poet, he uses his fists with surprising skill. He must be hurt. He seems to be unconscious. I think he's suffering from the effects of a trifle too much absinthe. I hadn't the heart to leave him. Ah, there you are, Mademoiselle Elvira. You're feeling no ill effects, I hope? No, Mr. Holmes. Splendid. Then, now that we're all assembled, supposing you tell us your story. Who kidnapped you tonight? It was one of Chavez's men. They made me disguise myself and swear never to see either of you again, on pain of death. Instead of which, we came to see you. We knew that Javert was connected with the spies. Now he is safely under lock and key. But we still don't know who is at the head of this organization. Can you give us any clues, mademoiselle? I, I think that the man you want was waiting in the cab that took me to the Scarlet Worm. But he was masked and he never spoke. Can't you recall anything that might give us a clue? Oh, one incident, if it means anything. Chavez's man said to him, We go to the Scarlet Worm, eh? That is good. You also, you make worms, no? And then he laughed. He said this in French, of course? Yes, yes, he did. Then the case is solved. I'm an idiot. I should have spotted it sooner. The man you want, Inspector, is lying asleep on the... Look out! He's not asleep. Watson, he's got a revolver. Oh, no, you don't. Oh! He's gone to sleep again. Really, Watson, you're in splendid form tonight. But, Monsieur Holmes, why do you say that man is the culprit? You yourself gave me the clue, Inspector, when you told me that the criminal was an Englishman posing as a Frenchman. But you only met the fellow on two occasions, and then not for more than a few minutes. It was long enough to realize that Flandau was really an Englishman. The first time we met him, he quoted a poem that he said was translated from the French. The translation was, Grave as the grave, August as August heat. The poem could not have been translated from the French because both of those puns are possible only in the English language. But how did my repeating the conversation in the cab give you a clue, Mr. Holmes? Because it was another pun. In French, the word for worms and for verses is the same. There. There. Spelt V-R-S. I see it now. When the man in the cab said, you make worms, he also meant, you make verses. Precisely, Watson. And thereby pointed directly at the poet there. With André Flandin, or whatever his real name is, in prison, I'm sure Mycroft will have no more trouble with his spying. <laughs> Ladies, of course you use a shampoo to wash your hair, but just a word of caution. There are many popular shampoos today which leave the hair lustrous but have a tendency to dry the hair. And that's why I advise you to always use Cremel shampoo. How right you are, Joe. Lovely Powers models were among the very first to discover the amazing, beautifying qualities of Cremel shampoo. They claim no other shampoo leaves hair with more brilliant, glossy, natural highlights. Yet under no circumstances does Cremel shampoo ever dry your hair. Cremel shampoo is not a soapless shampoo. It's not a cream shampoo. It's not a drying detergent. It's entirely different. Yes, after a Cremel shampoo, your hair actually radiates natural, brilliant luster. But Cremel shampoo is one shampoo you can buy today that has a beneficial built-in oil base, which helps keep the hair from becoming dry or brittle. So, ladies, be smart. Always wash your hair with Cremel shampoo. It leaves hair a vision of shining beauty, yet in no way hurts the texture. K-R-E-M-L, Cremel shampoo. Now, Dr. Watson, what about next week? Well, now, let me think. Next week, what shall I tell you? Next week, I think I'll tell you the story of how Sherlock Holmes, by solving an ancient musical cipher, managed to save the estates and restore the fortunes of the Earl of Moultrie. I call it The Adventure of Moultrie Abbey.
Tonight's newest Sherlock Holmes adventure was suggested by an incident in Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's story, The Naval Treaty. Nigel Bruce appeared by permission of California Pictures. Tom Conway through the courtesy of Eagle Lion Pictures. The Sherlock Holmes series is produced by Tom McKnight with original music composed and conducted by Alex Steiner. This is Joseph Bell speaking for Kremel Hair Tonic and Kremel Shampoo, inviting you to be with us next week at this same time when Dr. Watson will tell us about the adventure of Maltry Abbey. <laughs> This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. Welcome back. Well, for those who think that Nigel Bruce's Watson ends up looking like a bumbler in all these cases, this episode was for you. Dr. Watson, I don't think he's come off better in any of these episodes than in this particular one. All things considered, this went uh, fairly well for the good doctor. He was, as Holmes said, in fine form. And of course, um, him being called Willie. I believe I remember that from the indiscretion of Mr. Edwards. Part of me wanted him to say when she said, I'll call you Willie. Oh, please do. All the Femfentals do. Oh, uh, but they were playing it straight. Okay, well, we've got a few uh, listener comments to get into. Jens uh, writes in from Sweden. Hi, now, hi, my name is Jens, and I'm a big Sherlock Holmes fan. I love the series of old-time radio Sherlock Holmes, and I think you would do a great job introducing the episodes, Adam. I was just wondering, first, if you agree with me that Jeremy Brett is the de definite Sherlock Holmes. Um, well, that's a good question. Um, I, I think that, to be honest, a lot of this is preference. I, I think that there's a very good case to be made that Brett's portrayal of Sherlock Holmes is closer to what uh, Doyle wrote uh, than uh, the Rathbone portrayal. And maybe some of the things that so many enjoy in the way Bath Rathbone portrays the character are, in fact, uh, inconsistent the way Holmes was in the novels. Nevertheless, I... Uh, while respecting what Brett uh, did, find that uh, Basil Rathbone is still Sherlock Holmes. And how that plays out over time, I don't know. Particularly in the United States. But Rathbone uh, remains uh, not only the best known of the Holmes portrayals, but also uh, far more accessible. Then, uh, that, uh, then uh, Jens asks, Also, what do you think of the new Sherlock Holmes series starring uh, Benedict uh, Cumberbatch? Well, I wrote an article on that a few months back uh, over at greatdetectives.net. Um, I thought they did a really good job. It was a very believable update of the uh, character. Imagining if Holmes had been born as a Generation Y in our sort of ADD uh, generation, he would uh, express a lot of things of, of pure uh, boredom, which is already something that uh, my generation <laughs> tends to do. So it worked, uh, it worked on a lot of levels. Of course, they're really only three uh, movies in, so it's kind of hard to say what the trajectory of the series is going to be. I guess we'll find out when Series 2 comes out, uh, I think, later on this year. Uh, now we have a voicemail to play. It's going to be a couple minutes. We'll take a listen to that, and then we'll come back. Hey, it's Jonathan from Birmingham, Alabama. Again, I just wanted to call and say that I can't believe that uh, Neil Wolf uh, over. I liked it so far with a different, uh, with Sidney Grinchy as the playing Neil Wolf and the different uh, actors playing Archie. I like it, but uh, there's some cons to it also. Uh, one of them is that, you know, at times, um, the way they have Nero portrayed as, you know, him, you know, belittling Archie at times, I guess it's just I'm so used to uh, the books and the a and &E television shit, too, that came out in, like, 2001 and 2002, and... And the way he laughs at times, you know, it sounds kind of like a uh, child at times, but I guess that's just how they wanted to put, how they portrayed Nero Wolf back in, during the time 
when they had the radio drums out back in the late 40s, early 50s. So um, I won't hold that against them. <laughs> but um, Sherlock Holmes, I love I how they always keep it uh, the same and everything. And uh, So I just want to say that, to keep up the great work as usual. Still loving uh, the old-time radio dramas. And I hope you are going to be doing this for a long time because I'm loving it. Uh, thanks for the comments. Um, when we were doing the uh, Nero Wolf series, I often pointed out, you know, just as I was going through the book and the A&E series, some things I noticed. I will say that in the books, I, I don't know if the belittling of Archie by Nero Wolf is in itself uh, outside of uh, what happened in the story. Uh, Part of their very complex, very fascinating relationship was kind of this uh, back and forth. Though I, I would say, I guess, that Wolf is a bit more artful in the books. The one thing that's kind of uh, bothered me when thinking about the series after it's uh, all over is that Wolf consistently said no to cases, and then Archie would consistently say yes anyway, which may have been the biggest stretch in the series. But it was fun. Uh, regarding the laugh, that was kind of a Sidney Greenstreet uh, trademark, going back to uh, his role as Casper Gutman and the Fat Man in the Maltese Falcon, and that public association of of a fat man and uh, Nero Wolf is probably a big reason behind the casting uh, decision uh, for Sidney Greenstreet. Uh, also, well, one thing I did not include in the voicemail, just brief, to briefly let you know about it, is he does have a couple of Nero Wolf uh, groups over on Facebook. They're called Lovers of Rex Stout and Lovers of Archie Goodwin. And it's for people who read the books or saw the series and uh, enjoyed the characters. And I thought I'd mention it here because that part of the message got a little bit garbled and I had to... Listen a couple times to understand it, but it's Lovers of Rex Stout and Lovers of Archie Goodwin over on Facebook. Thanks so much for the comment. And got a comment here from James who says, Very glad to have found your site. And like Hazel, especially, and like Hazel commented previously, especially the Holmes and Wolf. Well, thanks so much, James. Welcome aboard, and I hope you uh, enjoy the program. Well, that'll do it for now. We will be back tomorrow with yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and next week, another episode of Sherlock Holmes. In the meanwhile, send your comments to Box13 at GreatDetectives.net. Follow us over on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And if you'd like to call us, feel free to 208-991-4783. From Boise, Idaho, though, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.